Hello everybody, it's Marcy from wavesofcommunication.com. Welcome to another episode of the Language Facilitation Helpline podcast, and thank you for tuning in today. Every action you take to help the late talkers in your life is important, that the fastest results come when you enjoy the process of language facilitation. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another Spotlight interview here on the Waves of Communication channel. Joining me today is Violet Donovan. Her mom is one of my clients in the Waves of Communication coaching program, and she joined my program because Violet had trouble when she was starting to learn to talk. And now it's been a few years since we started working. Violet offered to come on and share with us about her experience, about working with her mom, and maybe even working with her speech therapist and her teachers and a lot of other people, because a lot of people were part of your process to help you start to talk better. And I want you to tell us a story about your superpower. I understand that you're a dancer. Can you tell us a little bit about your dancing. I started when I was three and I go to a car he dance. This is my seventh year in dance and I just really love it. Wow. So do you dance only one style of dance? No, there's like millions of styles. Millions? What's your favorite? Hmm. Jazz. Wow. And what makes jazz so cool? I don't know. It's just cool. It's cool. Do you like the music or do you like the moves? Like, are jazz moves very different from like tap moves? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They are. Yes. You like jazz for your favorite kind of dance and it's not even the easiest style of dance in fact you have to work hard when you go to dance class don't you yeah yep and i bet when you learned to talk you had to work hard too didn't you yeah so let's talk a little bit about that now i know you learned to go dance at dance class and you had a dance teacher right or yeah. a lot of them, probably a few of them anyway. And now with your talking, you had a few teachers too, didn't you? Yeah. And so when your mom met me, she was kind of stuck because she couldn't find a teacher that you liked and that she liked. And so she decided to become your teacher. And that was way back when, how old were you when that was going on? Four years old then? Yeah. Okay, so now you were four years old and you still weren't talking very good. Isn't that right? Yeah. So can you tell us what it was like when you were four years old and it was hard to talk? What was going on? It was just really frustrating because when when I wanted something or when I was crying, people didn't know why what, what I wanted and why I was crying. Yeah. And why why were you crying? What was making you cry? That people couldn't really understand me. Mm. And so what did you do? I mean, when your mom started talking to you more slowly and, and helping you listen and things like that, what kinds of things did you do that helped your speech get better? I listen to music, I watch TV, and then I tried to practice a word, and then I finally got it. You did. So did you practice the same word over and over again, or were you mostly practicing, like, songs? Like, what did you think at first? Was it first songs? I actually don't know. You don't remember? Wow. So um, now you still go to speech, right? Yeah. Yeah, and what do you work on in speech? My R's. Your R's, yeah. And so um, other times in speech, did you work on other sounds? Yeah. Yeah, because the issue that was going on with Violet was when she was a little girl, she was talking. She was trying to talk 
but her speech was so muffled and jumbled that a lot of people couldn't understand her, right? I remember it was tricky at school when you were learning to read. That was a tricky time. Um, I remember because it was hard for you to hear all the sounds that the teacher was when you were decoding or sounding out words. Was that a tricky time for you? Yeah. Yeah. And that's because Violet has had a, hi a history of fluid in her ears. So you've been to the doctor a lot of times about your ears, haven't you? Yeah. Tell us what happens when your ears feel like they're underwater. It just feels so weird. <laughs> it feels weird. Let's think about your um your therapy now, where you go to therapy and you're working on your R's. What do you do when you go see what's first of all, what's your therapist's name? Um Trish. Trish. Miss Trish. And when you see Miss Trish, what do you do with her? Sometimes we play games if it's game day. And it, then usually we just work on the, my R's for three minutes and I just leave. Yeah. So when you say work on your R's, what do you do? Does she have flashcards and you say the same yeah. word over and over again? Yeah. So can you say one of those words that you say in therapy, like red? Can you try to say that with your therapy voice where you're trying really hard and saying it? Red. Wow. Look at that. Say it again. Red. Red. Wow. So Violet, listen to Violet. When she really thinks about it, she can make that R sound. But I bet you didn't think about when you were telling me you were working on R's, it kind of sounded like ow's, you know? So what's going on with Violet right now is she's still in the process of remembering to use her best R sounds all the time, right? Because in the therapy, when you're playing games and when you're practicing with me just now, when you did it, all of a sudden it, you can move your tongue a little different. You push it a little harder. You do whatever you do. Everybody has to do a little something different inside their mouth when they say the er sound. Everybody does it a little bit different. And so it takes a minute to figure out how to do that, right? But now it's about practice. So I know that you go and you see your speech therapist sometimes and play games and practice your R's. How do you practice your R's at home? How do you practice using that at home? We, she just gives us a list and then we practice. Okay. Do you ever practice saying R's while you're doing something else? Like maybe while you're, I know that you like to bake like muffins and cakes and stuff like that. My, I have an idea for you that when you, the next time you bake something, first of all, you bake something that's red, like red velvet or something like that. I know your mom is really good because your family's gluten-free and she'll find some kind of red or some kind of, of baked good that has a lot of er sound in it. So every time you touch that Thing. Or if you're going to dye Easter eggs, every time you dye a red Easter eggs, when you think about some of those words on your list, practice using them while you're doing another job. And that's going to help your brain let the good speech stick in where it goes. Do you think you can try that? Make a, a red cupcake or something like that? And yeah. then the whole time, no skimping. Every time you practice saying red, you use your best, best speech, just like you did with me. Do you think you can do that? Yeah. That's, I think, gonna be the trick. And once you do it one time with that, then it's up to you and mom to think about other activities, maybe a dress up activity, maybe a dance activity, maybe songs that have a lot of R's in them, you know, something like that. And then the whole song or the whole activity or the whole play 
you practice always using your best R. Because I think that's why the therapist has game day. Because it tries to get you to forget about your R and think about the game or think about the game at the same time you think about your R. And that's going to be your trick, Violet is to think about your R while you're also thinking about something else. And then it becomes automatic and not just when you have to think about where am I putting my tongue or pushing or whatever all that stuff is, okay? And you'll get it. I know you will because remember, there was a time that Violet, you couldn't understand anything. Violet. Nobody could understand anything Violet said so much that she had to cry. She was crying because people didn't hear what she wanted. And now, do you have trouble asking people for what you want, Violet? No. <laughs> I know. And do you love to make YouTube videos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What? What topic do you like to make on? Do you dance on videos or do you show? What do you want to do on your YouTube videos? I call it just dancing and opening my old backpacks and stuff. I love that. So you like find surprises and talk about what you find? Oh, yeah. I love those kinds of videos, Violet. And my other suggestion is that whenever you do an unpacking my backpack video, you practice using your best R. Just like we talked about in this video, using your big, bright voice and using your best talking. That way, you'll improve your speech at the same time you're making YouTube videos. And I'll bet you other kids who have trouble saying they're ours, and there are lots of other kids. I bet even in your speech group, there's other kids that have trouble saying they're ours, aren't there? Yeah. Yeah, it's really, really common for kids to have trouble saying their R's. And it doesn't have to affect how you ask for what you want or how you play games or how you make friends. But it only will get better if you work on it. Right, Violet? Yeah. Yep. So that's why Violet goes to therapy and she practices with her mom. And now she's going to try these other strategies to help her do better. Does that sound like a good plan, Violet? Yeah. So the other question I have is, what would you tell other kids if they are having a hard time because their speech is not very good yet? They should just make up a game with the, with the letter they're working on. Make it fun, right? That's the whole thing. Because that you didn't even realize you're working on it as long as you're having fun. Yeah. And that's why there's always game day, but there's always work day in speech therapy too, right? Because you always have to have both. And I know you don't mind the work because you want your speech to get better. Why do you think it's important for kids to improve their speech, Violet? Because when you're older, you're going to have kids and they wouldn't understand you. That's a really good reason for everybody to improve their speech because it's not just important for your friends, but your kids to understand you. I love that reason. Okay, Violet, thank you for joining us today. I'm going to have you pass the microphone over to mom so we can talk to mom for a minute. Summer found me back when Violet, was she four when she started? Yeah, I want. Yeah. yeah, I think about four and a half. Yeah, it was right four after we half. had her lip and, and tongue tie lasered with her dental surgery. Yeah, so she at that point she was trying to talk, but it was pretty much unintelligible. Um, you were about the only one that could figure out what she wanted, and mostly it was nonverbal communication. And it was really because she had a tongue tie and ear fluid, and her whole ear, nose, and throat system was just really physiologically not working. Violet doesn't even remember those days, you know. And I asked her to talk about it, and which is beautiful because yeah. that means that she's really look she's not focusing on it and it's also really important to know for parents who are going through this struggle right now right because when you were joining me these issues were not completely resolved you were still in the middle of them and deciding about whether to have surgeries and all of those things going on can you talk a little bit about your ear nose and throat journey with violet before you even found me yeah absolutely we um we moved when we when she was close to about 24 months old 
and um, we weren't sure if she regressed or what, or what was going on. And um, it, it was kind of a difficult journey. My husband worked a lot. We were in a new area and I just wasn't sure what to do. I didn't have any points of references. So, and of course, as a first time mom and um, with Violet, she was kind of our miracle baby. It was, I was easily making mountains out of molehills. So even though my husband thought things were just fine um, and that we should just tread lightly, I was looking for ENT after ENT. And um, we finally found one when she was about three and a half. And he said, if she was my daughter, I would do the elective surgery with tubes. So she just, we had, it took a long time to get an audi, like a, a pediatric audiologist test. Um, and by the time we figured that out, we realized that it was almost like she was underwater. I remember specifically, she would say more. And after her last ear infection, she would say bore with a B. And um, it was that way for a very long time. And so he was really amazing and helped us um, walk through that journey. And then we, she started some dental work right after four and we had a dentist say, she's got a really significant lip and tongue tie, which that made sense to me finding out more because she, when she nursed, she was a cluster nurser and, and all the things. And so that made sense as well. And so, um, right after that is when we found Marcing and, and, and it was like a, a saving grace, her, her, uh, 90 minute master class that you can take to see kind of what her process is. I just felt like she was talking specifically to me and I instantly just felt less alone. So we made the decision, um, uh, me and my husband to do the lifetime programming. And that was incredible because it helped me be more present and connect with Violet instead of always looking for the next problem and trying to be a half a step or a step ahead. Um, it just allowed me to um, just do better and to naturally facilitate language to Violet. Well, and I think the other thing, and it's really common, you were in a very similar situation to, I want to say 99.9% yeah. of the parents that join me who are here through this ENT journey. Now, there are a lot of parents that find waves of communication because their kids aren't talking yet. And then there are others that their kids, their speech is not functional. Mm -hmm. And it's a result of this ear, nose and throat, you know, it's, it's chronic. In her case, there was lots of different things going on. And what ends up happening when there are lots of physiological things going on, the parents focus goes on getting those problems solved. Like you said, it took time even to get into the ENT, to get the evaluations, to get the surgeries, to get the things scheduled and all of that time in the meantime, you're not realizing that there are other things that you can be doing yes. because you're focused on that stuff. And then once you did get to a point where she was hearing you got the tubes and the tongue tie was released and she was actually physiologically in a position to start trying to talk, what came out was completely unintelligible, you know, and it wasn't like there was nothing coming out. And it's kind of a different problem than a lot of the parents have here. But in Violet's case, it really caused a massive hit to her heart, her ability to connect with people and her confidence in the world, didn't it? Talk about who she was as a little girl back then after all of these physiological things had been resolved and she was still trying to interact with the world with this speech. Yeah, it was really, really hard, especially with her peers. I was in mom groups and moms were not nice. And Violet, <laughs> from a very young age, just got a really hard life lesson about how people judge people and put people in boxes. And so um, she couldn't even ask a kid on the playground, can you play with me? And she would try to do it in her own way. And many kids would be just very mean to the point where it got to the point where Violet didn't want to interact with other kids. She would just cry or scream because she, um, at, at one point she was signing, but that went away. Um, and it just got to the point where she was just constantly frustrated, which if I couldn't communicate properly, I would, I would do the exact same thing. It's it, I can't imagine how frustrating it was. 
That's why I was so grateful when we found your program. I noticed as a mom in the fir- for the first time in forever, I stopped comparing myself to everyone around me and our circumstances. I found other families going through what we went through. And there was something so beautiful in that to not feel like we were, we're not alone. We're, there's others in this journey with us. Yeah, not just a coach, but other moms. And that's what's nice about our community was as parents, because it's not a it's not an overnight fix. Obviously, Mm -hmm. we're looking at changing old habits and developing neurology that couldn't develop physically because it was blocked. You know, she couldn't hear. So neurology couldn't develop for sound development, understanding and all of that stuff as you were still in the world, going to dance classes and and preschools and mom's groups and things like that, trying to be part of the community church even, you know, Mm -hmm. where you were being judged over and over again without any kind of solutions. And that's part of why I created Waves of Communication is because you guys out there, moms and dads, are dealing every day with kids that are still not completely physiologically healed. And then Even after they start to get better, we've got these emotional and mindset um, and environmental things, people who judge, you know, things like that going on. And I think what's exciting about what you have done with Violet is show her what we did was we equipped Violet with easy speech that was easy for her to pick up slow speech that was easy for her to try. And Violet herself became empowered to try to improve her speech. When you made it easy and fun, you know, because remember, we listen to Violet's advice. What do you do if your kiddo doesn't want to work on your speech? You make a game out of it. So Summer, that's what you did, right? Tell us, how did you get this frustrated, gobbledygook speech little girl who wanted desperately to connect with friends and make friends and do all that. How did you equip and empower her to do that? I just gave her time. I just really held space for her, which I didn't realize I wasn't doing. I was so worried about everything else because I had waited so long to have her that I was just making issues. And once I took accountability myself that I was the conduit to causing these issues, that was probably the biggest part. And I think that that's why this coaching piece is really important. Um, but for Violet, it was just, okay, we knew that it took her time to warm up. And once she got there, she had a great time. So just finding those safe places. So going to swim class 15 minutes early, going to dance class 15 minutes early and saying, you know what, instead of other people holding space for us, I'm going to invite people to us. I'm, I'm going to make sure that Violet feels like our home is the funnest place ever. So we had a bounce house in the basement. We would invite people over and we would explain to them about Violet in advance and um, just give the Violet and whoever we invited over time to just warm up and be together and just doing that on a regular basis and facilitating no to let no Violet use what you showed her. I see, this is what yeah. we talk about when we talk about making these opportunities for the potential to just emerge. You equip Violet by giving her good speech models, giving her time, giving her space, showing her what she wants, and then empower her by setting her up in situations where she's going to succeed, where there's no pressure for her to perform, where it's just let's go have fun together. And there's not the pressure of even the environment of the park or the church or the whatever, where people were judging. You create a situation where you invite people to, to join you. And I think you taking the responsibility of creating that environment around you, it, it required you to let go of some stuff, didn't it? It did. It did. It was, um, it was some real work, but it's what I needed. It was exactly what I needed. And I have been just a much better person ever since it it's brought so much peace to our house. And um, I'm just so grateful how far we've come. We have complete normalcy. Like this little girl was in drama club this year and she had three parts. She even had a singing solo. Like we get to have a really awesome life. Yeah. When back when you were, she was young, you were worried if that was even a possibility. Absolutely. 
And now the possibilities are endless. So are. I just love that. Well, Summer, obviously the coaching program, you joined before I had all these other resources and, you know, secret Summer works for me on the side. She is my internet fairy who helps share my resources out to the world on Instagram and YouTube and stuff. So you might see her around there because she is wonderful at connecting to other parents and helping them experience the kind of success that she did. And um, we're all here as part of our Waves of Communication community. Other moms who've been through the process, moms who are not yet in it yet, moms who are somewhere in the middle, you're all welcome here um, to equip and empower your kids. And remember, this little girl developed to be the amazing, outgoing little girl that she is we're just so happy for you guys. We're just so happy because you guys did the work. These two girls on screen right here worked together. They connected together. Violet helped mom help her and by connecting with mom and being patient and listening and trying hard. And mom connected with Violet by giving her space and not pressuring her and making things fun and keeping the whole process happy so that, you know, she has good opportunities to improve in all the things she wants and your future looks bright. So thank you, lady, for joining me. Yay for all your progress. And I can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks for tuning in today. With a whole range of Waves of Communication resources, from free content to customized coaching, you now have access to everything you need to elevate spoken language to infinite success. You are welcome to get your journey started with my 11-week language facilitation journey to speech workbook. This tool is helping parents worldwide create nonstop language facilitation opportunities that elevate spoken language beyond even their own expectations. You can access this workbook and all of the language facilitation resources on my website, wavesofcommunication.com.